Luke chapter 19. Mm. Hallelujah. Luke chapter 19, 1 through 10. When you have it, say amen. It's also a poem. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for this opportunity and privilege, O oh God. Now infuse me all the more with your Holy Spirit, O oh God. Sit every ounce of flesh down, God, and let your spirit stand up tall, that you, these, your people, your sheep, O oh God, would hear a word directly from your throne of grace. God, let them not leave here the same way they came in, but let them be nourished in their spirit from your word, O oh God. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, Oh God, you are my strength and my redeemer. Help me to deliver this with love and compassion. And this is an emergency. Oh God, your word is an emergency yes. for your people. Let them digest it. Carry it throughout the week and the year for their betterment in Jesus' name. Somebody say amen. Amen. And Jesus entered and passed through Jericho. And behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus, which was the chief among the publicans. Somebody said he was the chief. He was the chief. And he was rich. And he sought to see Jesus, who he was, and could not for the press because he was little of stature. Uh, read that again. He sought to see Jesus, who he was, and could not for the press and because he was little of stature. And he ran before and climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him, for he was to pass that way. And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and saw him and said unto him, Zacchaeus, hurry up and come down, for today I must abide at that house. And he made haste and came down and received them. Somebody say joyfully. joyfully. And when they saw it, they all murmured, saying, That was he that he was gone to be a guest with a man that is a sinner. Zacchaeus stood and said unto the Lord, Behold, Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor. And if I have taken anything from any man by false accusation, I restore him fourfold. And Jesus said unto him, This day is salvation come to this house. For so much as he also is a son of Abraham, for the Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. And I want to talk to you from the topic of come down from there. Right. Somebody turn to your neighbor and shake your neighbor's hand and say, Neighbor, neighbor. Please, please come down from there. Amen. Please be seated in the presence of the Lord. Come down from there. As I study St. Luke Deacon Aaron and the text of Zacchaeus, I learned that Luke taught about the elevated position of riches more than all the gospels and the epistles of Paul put together. He wanted the readers to understand that the insatiable desire to get rich is a dangerous obsession. And unless we have a real innate passion and compassion to get all we can in order to give to the needy, then we ought to really pray and consider why we have this elevated, insatiable desire to get rich. Somebody say amen. amen. It is also important to consider what are we doing with what we currently have. All right. And so we don't fool ourselves and think that we are fooling God. This Greek word for rich is plusius, which is properly wealthy, abounding in materialistic resources in this particular context of what Luke is saying. Riches or material wealth can be a blessing or a curse depending on how it is used, sometimes for power, influence, or manipulation, sometimes for self-indulgence, or in some cases it is used properly and proportionately to serve others. Amen. 
Money, it is a tool, an excellent resource when put to the right use. It can help to build many things of use to others, but to possess it, we must also possess a sacred level of stewardship. Somebody say amen. amen. I don't want to bust your bubble today about getting rich, hallelujah, but I needed to break it down real simple, hallelujah. If we want to get rich for the wrong reasons, you are in trouble. Amen. It is not for consolation for ourselves or hoarding, but it is for, somebody say, generosity. generosity. Many people want to get rich because of fear. Mm -hmm. or greed, or selflessness, or trying to compensate for a great lack experience in life. But I resist the temptation to preach about the love of money today, for this sermon is not about money, it is about overcompensating in some areas because of a lack in other areas over the course of your life. Uh -huh. Let me say that again. I'm not here today to preach to you about money, but I'm here to preach to you about overcompensating in some areas of your lives because you have been lacking in others. Oh, somebody say amen. Amen. This kind of overcompensating oftentimes bring about character flaws that we need to be aware of. But I want somebody to know today that if you allow Jesus to feel your hunger, you have just compensated for every area of lack in your life. Uh, let me say that again. If you allow Jesus to fill you up, if you allow Jesus to give you everything that you need, uh, you have just filled yourself with everything. And hallelujah, no, no lack in life can compare to the glory and to the filling that Jesus can give you. What the Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, and God is able to make all grace abound to you so that having all sufficiency in all things at all times, you may abound in every good work. Somebody tell your neighbor, come down from there. Come down from there. Oh, hallelujah. Come down from there. Come down from there. This text, this text. Jesus is on his way to Jerusalem for a triumphal entry, hallelujah, into Jerusalem as he was heading toward, hallelujah, the time when they were waving palms and as he was heading toward the cross, he passes through Jericho. The center of trade was Jericho where Zacchaeus is the one that sits at the tax of customs. Zacchaeus is a publican. In other words, Zacchaeus is a tax collector. And the name Zacchaeus in meant pure and righteous. Uh -huh. I, I, I needed to ask God the question, hallelujah, why did his parents name him Zacchaeus? Somebody that's pure and righteous and now he is a tax collector uh, hated by all the Jews. Uh, tax collectors were considered criminals, uh, uh, but they named him Zacchaeus. Uh, hallelujah. And his life did not line up with what his name was, uh, but his parents still saw something in him uh, that named him pure and righteous. Uh, can I submit to you today that maybe Zacchaeus in life, uh, he took a wrong route. Maybe Zacchaeus in life, uh, uh, he, he went down the wrong path. Am I the only one in here today that your mother believed in you, God believed in you, but somehow, some way over the course of your life, you have made the wrong direction. But I need somebody to know today that just because you made the wrong stop and you went the wrong way does not mean that God cannot straighten you back out. Oh, somebody shout glory. They gave him the name Zacchaeus. I don't know who I'm talking to today, but somebody saw some good in you, Michael. I don't care what people said bad about you, but there's somebody that saw good in you. There's somebody that saw God in you. And even though you made some mistakes in your life, you are still who God created you to be. For the Bible says, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart, and I appointed you as a prophet to the nations. The book of Psalms says, you I saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. And I need somebody to understand today that no matter what route you took, God still meant exactly what he said about you. He still meant it when he said that you are the head and not the tail. He still meant it when he said that you are above and not beneath. He still meant it when he said that you are the lender and not the borrower. So no matter what route you took in your life, you need to understand. 
understand that you are still who God said you are. You are still a royal priesthood. You are still a chosen generation. I know that you stole some things. I know that you picked up some stuff that you shouldn't have. I know that you lied and you cut some folk and you cut some folk out. But if God said you are still going to end up exactly where I would have you to be, somebody shout glory. glory. Hallelujah. Somebody say, I'm still me. I'm still me. Somebody say, I'm still who God called me to be. I'm still who God called me to be. His name meant pure and righteous. Oh, Saba. I, I, I need to prophesy to some of the youth today. I need to prophesy to some of the young folk today. Uh, you, your parents may have been saying good things about you. They may have been speaking life into you. And everybody knows that everybody makes mistakes. But you are still who God said that you are. You are still who your parents said that you are. You are still great. And even though you took the wrong route, and even though you did some things that your parents don't even know about, God is still on your side. Side, and he's still gonna pick you up when you fall. Oh, somebody shout glory. Glory! Zacchaeus, name it pure and righteous. But something along the way of life went wrong, and he made the wrong turn. The Bible says that he was the chief tax collector. This might not be for everybody. But he said he was the chief tax collector. That means that he was the chief criminal. Uh, some of us in here cannot relate to Zacchaeus. But some of us were the chief kingpin. Some of us out in the world, we were doing things that nobody can do wrong better than us. Or some of us have, maybe it's just me. But some of us would cuss you out before they kiss you. Some of us would cut you for looking at you wrong. Some of us was the chief doing what was wrong. Some of us was the drug kingpin. Some of us was the king drug addict and the king alcoholic. But God said, just because you were the king over there, now you can be great over here. Just because you were busy over there, does not mean you can't be busy over here. Somebody say, do it for God. God. Somebody shout, do it for God. He was the chief tax collector. He was the head of nonsense. He was the, the guy that, oh Jesus, uh, y'all looking at me funny. Is there anybody that can stand to your feet and admit to God that nobody could do it better when you were doing wrong? <laughs> Is it just me? But in all of y'all, high holy has never done nothing wrong. <laughs> Is there any time when nobody can do it better than you? Zacchaeus was the chief tax collector. Why? Because he had to overcompensate for areas of his life that he was lacking. He was the chief liar. Jesus. He was the chief cheat. The chief womanizer. The chief fighter. The chief drug addict. The, the chief whatever vice it was, he was the chief. And the Bible tells me that he got rich doing it. Come on, Bishop. My God. Oh, Jesus, thank you. Whatever it was. You might have made a whole lot of money doing it. Am, am, I, am I talking to the, to the wrong church today? No, you're right. You're talking right. You're talking right. We need it. He, he, he made a lot of money doing it. But the fact of the matter was, something was missing. It does not matter how much money you have. It does not matter how much materialistic things you have. It does not matter how big your house is. It don't even matter who your husband or your wife is. If you don't got Jesus, you don't got nothing. It doesn't matter who you were in the world, what streets, what kind of street credibility that you had. Uh, soon and very soon, you're going to find out that if I don't got Jesus, I don't have nothing. But if I got Jesus, I got everything I need. Silver and gold have I none, but I got somebody shout Jesus. The Bible says he was the chief tax collector. Hallelujah. And he was rich. He got rich being a tax collector because he had to cheat to get what he was lacking because he was overcompensating for what he didn't have in the past. 
And every now and again, when you try to overcompensate for what you don't have, you go overboard and do what's wrong to get what you're overcompensating for. Uh -huh. He sought. So the Bible says, but he sought to see Jesus. Uh, and who he was. Oh, can, can I submit to you, Daryl? That he did not want to just see Jesus. That word see, hallelujah, uh, in, in the Greek is pronounced iodine, and it does not mean that I just want to look at you. <laughs> or oh, somebody just want to just look at Jesus from afar. <laughs> you really don't want no part of him, but you just want to be nosy and see what he's doing. <laughs> but Zacchaeus, he wanted to see him, he wanted to iodine him, <laughs> which means that he wanted to discern and experience God. <laughs> and I need to know if there's anybody under the sound of my voice <laughs> that don't want to just see Jesus move in my neighbor. <laughs> But I want to just experience him for myself. I don't want to just see him down the street. But I want to feel him deep down on the inside. And if I can feel Jesus on the inside, I don't got to worry about what he's giving me. Because he gave me himself on the cross at the altar. Is there anybody under the sound of my voice that has experienced money, that has experienced honey, that has experienced his houses and gold? But if I could just get more of Jesus, if I could just get a feeling, not just on the outside of me, but if I can experience Jesus all the way on the inside, I shall be filled. I shall have everything I need. I need Jesus. If I don't got nothing else, if I don't got a wife, if I don't got a husband, if I don't got a job, if I don't got a bank account, if you could just give me Jesus, somebody shout, give me Jesus, give me Jesus. He wanted to discern Jesus, did you know he wanted not to just see him with his eyes. Oh my God. But he wanted to experience Jesus. And, and it says that in verse 3 he says, but could not for the press. Mm -hmm. uh, he could not see Jesus because everybody was pressing up on Jesus. Uh -huh. And you have to understand, some of us are pressing up on Jesus just to get what Jesus got. Right, right. My God. Come on, my God, my God. That's not worship. Some of us, you have to understand, when Jesus was going about doing good, everybody was pressing up on him. Uh -huh. Because they wanted to ask him for something. They, they wanted some of the material things that he has. But Zacchaeus, he did not get a part of the religious group. All he wanted was worship. Uh, all, all he wanted was to experience Jesus. Yes. And then the Bible tells me that Zacchaeus, he could not experience him in that moment because just like the rest of his life, he was being overlooked. My God, my God. <laughs> he was short in stature. Hallelujah. And he was being overlooked. In other words, you got all these folk that call themselves children of God. Uh -huh. But when somebody really don't know God, they're too greedy for Jesus that they won't even share him with poor Zacchaeus. Uh -huh. And all they're doing is flacking him and pressing him and crowding him. Uh -huh. Oh, shabbat, blah, 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 I need to put this in somebody's spirit. Every now and again, we have to open up the gate and let the unsaved folk see Jesus. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Hallelujah. But Zacchaeus... Just like the rest of his life was overlooked. Oh, I need somebody to understand today that there are some people that are going to walk into your presence. There are going to be some people that's going to walk into your church. And they're going to feel that they have been overlooked by the church. That they've been overlooked by the religiosity religious folk. And that just because they don't have on a collar, and just because they don't have on a deacon's shirt, or a suit and a 
tie and a dress. And now everybody wants to overlook them because they don't dress the way that you think that they should dress. And they don't pray the way that you think that they should pray. And now they are being overlooked. Uh, they are being overlooked because they're out in the streets doing the things that they should not do. And some of us think that we're too high holy, that we can't lay hands on them and say no matter what you're going through, goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life. So every now and again, you find people around that have been overlooked. And some of you have been overlooked at your job. You've been overlooked for the promotion. You've been overlooked at your house. And some of us have a Napoleon complex. You better go ahead and preach that bitch up. Some of us have a Napoleon complex. It is an inferiority complex normally attributed to people of short stature, but it is characterized by overly aggressive or domineering social behavior, such as lying about earnings and etc. And so if we dig deep into this context, it goes much deeper than height. That's right. That's right. But sometimes people overcompensate because of a lack in certain areas. Oh, Sometimes people have anger problems or yell because you weren't heard as a child. Yeah. And they would always tell you to shut up when you felt like you had something to say. Uh -huh. Sometimes people go hard after money because they lost so much or they had so little during their lives. Sometimes people are aggressive because they were bullied when they were a child. Sometimes people are workaholics because they have an inner pressures that make them want to be seen a certain way or other drivers in their lives that make them overcompensate by working too hard. Sometimes people allow others to use them and abuse them because they have been rejected in life. And so now they are overcompensating and allowing people to treat you any old kind of way because you no longer want to be rejected. And now you allow people to talk to you any old kind of way because you're overcompensating and you have a Napoleon complex. But the devil is a liar. I need somebody to understand today that no matter how much you've been rejected, you need to know that you are a royal priesthood. You are a chosen generation. Somebody for God's very own possession who has called you out of darkness and into his marvelous life. Hallelujah. Uh, uh, Zacchaeus had a Napoleon complex. Uh, Zacchaeus does what he does and he improvises. When you have a Napoleon complex, every now and again, you have to improvise to get what you want and to get to where you're trying to go because uh, all of your life you've been overlooked. All of your life uh, you've been talked about. All of your life uh, you did not get exactly what it is that you thought that you should get. So he improvises and uses what he has to get what he wants. Hallelujah. This time, he uses what he has to get what he wants. I, I, I might be lacking in certain areas, so I'm going to overcompensate in this area. And so I'm going to use what I have to get what I want. But this time, what I want is not money. It's not honey. Uh, this time, it's not a career or a house or tangible materialistic things. Uh, this time, I'm going to use what I have to get to Jesus. Uh, oh, somebody tell your neighbors, say, get to Jesus. He climbs to me up the sycamore tree uh, and he positions himself uh, so that not only he would be able to see Jesus, but Jesus would also be able to notice him. <laughs> Oh, I need somebody to understand this. Hallelujah. When you properly position yourself, uh, I'm not talking about praise, but when you properly position yourself uh, in a space of a worship, uh, you will not just see Jesus, uh, but Jesus will also see you. And there is nothing like eye contact, uh, because whenever you have eye contact, now you have established intimacy. And so now I'm looking at you, and you're looking at me, and now there's a spirit of worship and not a spirit of praise. And so he's on the sycamore tree. Looking at Jesus, he positioned himself so that he can be received of the Lord. And there were three things that I noticed. He desired Jesus. You can write that down. Even in 
the midst of whatever it is. You have to desire Jesus. But the Bible says, delight yourself in the Lord also, and he will give you the desires of your heart. He, he, he had a desire to see Jesus. And he was not going to allow anything to get in his way of getting to Jesus. Oh, some of us will not allow things to get in our way to get what we want. But we have to be the same way for Jesus. You cannot allow anything to get in your way to get to Jesus. Oh, somebody say, get to Jesus. Get to Jesus. He desired Jesus. But another thing he did was this rich man of status. Can you imagine this little short man? In the tree, he was undignified. Not only did he desire Jesus, but getting to Jesus, he did not have to get all high sedity. But every now and again, you have to know how to be undignified. You don't gotta look sit there and look pretty if you really want to get to Jesus. You don't gotta worry about your makeup when you really want to get to Jesus. You don't have to worry about your tie being out of place when you really want to get to Jesus. But when you really want to get to Jesus, you know how to get undignified. You know how to give him a praise. And if nobody don't like it, you can tell them like David did. I'll get more undignified than this. Somebody shout, I'll get more undignified. desired Jesus. He desired him. And he, he got undignified. I, I, I'm trying to tell you how you can really, really get a level of intimacy with Jesus. He desired him. And then in his desire, he was undignified. In other words, I don't care who's looking at me any old kind of way. If you think I'm crazy, if you don't understand my praise, you won't understand what I've been through in my life. I don't care how they're looking at me. I'm not here for anybody else to be looking at me, but I'm here for Jesus to see that I love you, I need you, and I want you. He desired him. He was undignified. And lastly, he used that same zeal and mind to get to God. For the Bible says, whatever you do, do it with your whole being for the Lord and not for men. Because you know that you will receive an inheritance from the Lord as your reward. He goes in the sycamore tree. And Jesus says to him, as he makes eye contact, he says, Deacon Raymond, he says, Zacchaeus, come down from there. Come down immediately. I know that you're up in a tree and you had to go up there because you had, hallelujah, a Napoleon complex. And you have to show everybody that you're going to get exactly what you need, however it is that you need it. Uh, and so what I need you to do, Zacchaeus, is come down from there. And God wants somebody today that have been going high because you've been overlooked. God said, come down from there. I don't know who I'm talking to today, but there's somebody that's been trying to prove yourself. You've been trying to prove yourself to your husband. You've been trying to prove yourself to your wife. And you've been trying to prove yourself to society. You've been trying to get everything you get and everything you can so that you can show people that you are more than what they said that you are. I don't know who I'm talking to today, but you tried to get that promotion because you tried to show somebody your worth. You tried to get that money so you can look a certain way. You tried to get that man or you tried to get that woman because all your life they have been calling you ugly and making fun of your features. And so now you feel that you have to go higher to get what you want. But God said, come down from there. I know you went up high so you can improve yourself but come down from there I know you got no self esteem but come down from there whatever you went up that high I'm right here now right here before you right here standing with you right here talking to you right here hugging you 
Jesus said, I came to seek, oh, Sabata, and to save those who are lost. That's what he said. Somebody shake your neighbor's hand and say, he's seeking you. He's seeking more of you. And to put an order for God to get all of God, oh, Shabbat. God, now I speak, I speak for myself. God wants all of me. But in order for him to have all of me, I have to come down from the sick of Thank you, Lord. Thank you. I have to come down from the place of where I've elevated myself, come down to Jesus, and let Jesus elevate me more than I've ever been elevated ever. where if you are doing for Jesus you can care less what people think about you That's right. Hallelujah. because when you're always worried about what people think about you then you begin to try to elevate yourself to yeah, their yeah, expectation yeah, right, Hallelujah. the Hallelujah. devil is a liar Hallelujah. Hallelujah. if you're doing what's right I can care less what people think about me That's right. if I'm doing what God told me to do That's right, Bishop. I need to put that in somebody's spirit today. If you're doing what God told you to do, it don't matter what nobody else has to say. Even if you made some mistakes, if you're going in the right direction and you're trying God, it does not matter what nobody has to say. Because then I'll be elevating myself to your expectations. And I'll never, ever, ever meet your expectations. Somebody clap your hands and give God some glory. Somebody turn to your neighbor and say, come, find somebody and say, come down from there. Somebody find a neighbor and say, come down from there. Come down from there. I'm done. If you don't come down from there, you're going to fall down and break your leg. Hallelujah. If you don't come down on your own, it's going to be painful. Zacchaeus came down and received them joyfully. But if God got to knock you down, it ain't going to be no joy for you. Come down from there. Come down from there. If there be one under the sound of my voice that does not know the Lord as the pardon of your sins.